I'm Jeremy Paul. I'm from Northeastern. I'm also from New York, so I'll talk fast. Oh, sorry. So, so I heard this conference was about assessment, and I wanted to talk about uh, the way the traditional exam is a better tool for assessment than we normally give it credit to. Uh, so I built this off the book that I did with Michael Fischel called Getting to Maybe. Is it roll by itself? Okay, so I guess this one, this one shouldn't be 20 seconds. All right, so, so the first thing I learned as a teacher, students want to learn, but more than that, what they care about is that you run a fair competition. Uh, and what I took from that for my whole career is that everything I do, I start by thinking about how am I gonna test this? Because if I can't test it, it's gonna be really hard to teach it year in and year out. Um, so today I'm gonna talk about the very traditional hypothetical exam, long story, lots of things weaved in, uh, and what the student has to do is act like the attorney or act like the judge uh, and solve in some way or another uh, the issues that we as professors uh, bury into the, uh, into the story, which is, as far as I know, very different from other schools. All right, so obviously it'd be better to have midterms and quizzes, uh, but the difference between summative and formative assessment to me is not the only point about assessment. And uh, what's so great about the law school exam is it's not really cumulative. It's really many, many small little points built into one larger question. You could give it any time. So in high school, we ask facts, what's the molecular formulas, dates, uh, college, we ask general essays, uh, but in law school, it's things have changed, uh, what are you gonna do? Uh, and my claim is, is that that kind of assessment uh, is something that every other form of, of education should be grabbing us uh, for. Uh, because everybody agrees assessment is crucial, but everybody hates it because we don't test critical thinking, but the law school exam is a great way of resolving that tension by simultaneously uh, assessing adequately and also uh, teaching uh, critical thinking at the same time. Uh, and so, I'll keep it up. All right. So, uh, law professors tell students all the time, it's not about the phone book, you're not memorizing rules. Uh, and then professors complain, ah, our teachers, students don't know that, that there's no right answers. But then you say to them, well, you give A's and C's, don't you? And they say, well, an A is the right answer. Uh, so if we don't believe that it's all just up for grabs, there must be something that we're looking for. Uh, and what we do is it's like the Where's Waldo books, you know, hide the issues. Uh, and this is our method for uh, testing critical thinking. Everything the students learned is applicable, but it doesn't actually apply directly, and they have to make it up. And now here's the key point. The application failures are systematic and predictable. So you know in advance when you're learning any body of law that they're gonna be familiar things. It's hard to figure out what the law is from reading the materials. You don't know if, if a case is about disclosure for defects in a roof, is it the roof, is it defects, is it anything with the market value of the house? And it's hard to apply the law even um, when we agree what it is. So if you have to disclose things about the house and the house was haunted, is that something that you have to disclose? Uh, students' reaction, why haven't you figured all this out? Why isn't this all clear? And what I always say to them is, write down a grocery list, give it to somebody, have them take it to the store. If they don't have their cell phone, you know they're gonna come back with something wrong, right? 2% milk instead of 1%. Uh, and so, uh, so here are some of the familiar examples uh, of the ambiguities, literal and purposive readings of statutes, uh, multiple purposes of the statute, narrow and broad holdings of cases. These are the things we actually teach in law school. We pretend to teach property and torts and contracts, but this is really what we're teaching, and this is what we test. Uh, and so the um, law school does a better job of testing than other, other places. Uh, ambiguity of categories is another absolutely predictable form of things that we can test. There will always be hybrids. Uh, Joey's Diner is in an Italian restaurant, it's an American restaurant. Uh, you try to figure out if someone's a tenant, if they're a musician, they live in their studio, are they a tenant, are they not residential or commercial? Uh, then once we figure out where the ambiguities are, whole new range of critical thinking for students, policy arguments, what to do, how do you figure out how to resolve these things, all built into this one little assessment technique uh, that we can administer in three hours. Uh, so um, you know all about the, the, what the policies are. Um, here's the patterns. Cost-benefit analysis, institutional competence arguments, rights arguments and morality, uh, broader political arguments. I, I thought about writing, keep government off my Medicare, but I decided that that was a, a, a too, but, but you know, the, the, the political things. So, so the student has a chance to excel, not because they, they learn things um, about the subject, but because, so here's, now, now there's a, here's the real problem with assessment, is a huge mismatch between what we assess, which is better than we think, and what we teach explicitly, which is worse. So we don't actually teach all these things in, in class, 
uh, we tell students that they're learning courses with subject matters, and then they come in for the exam, they're like lambs to the slaughter, right? Because we never told them what, what they're gonna do. So, um, because we don't know how to assess other things that we wanna teach, financial literacy, strategic planning, teamwork, project management, we're scared to do those because we, we are, are stuck on our assessment methods, uh, but we're not nearly as good at teaching, uh, testing these other things in a rigorous fashion. I hope we'll talk about that at the conference. Uh, so I'm looking forward to hearing about systematic study of assessment techniques in other disciplines uh, and the key search for other ways to teach critical thinking rather than just knowledge accumulation, which we all know in the age of Google is not something that our students are gonna get paid for uh, when they graduate. All right, so what do we wanna do? We wanna build learning transfer from the classroom to other places. Uh, in my, my very first course I taught, uh, three memos, three issues, I gave the students an exam at the end, they all got at least one of them wrong. They only knew three things, and they still didn't get it, right? Uh, and uh, we want to keep the rigor of traditional exams in other settings like moot court. You ever watch a moot court judge? You know, did you look the, the judge in the eye? Did you stand up straight, right? Why isn't moot court judging much more substantive like uh, exams? So, uh,